Right, so we're back to Python and in this video we'll be seeing uh, uh, all the equivalent functions of these functions. These are basically, you know, functions in Java. So we're going to see how to implement these functions in Python programming language. So uh, let's get this started. So first of all, let me uh, initialize a string. Let's say hello world is a string. So first of all, we'll start with finding the length of the string. And in case of Java, we use the dot length function to find the length of the string. So in Python, it's nothing but l equal to l is a variable basically i'm storing it uh, the length of the string st in l so i can say l equal to len open and close parenthesis and inside that you can just give string right so len is actually a function so we are passing the string as an argument to this function len and it will return the, the length of the string which is basically going to be uh, integer data type so let's print this out let's say print uh, length of the string is and then you can just say comma uh, l right so let's uh, go ahead and uh, run this python string start by so yeah length of the string is 11 so that's how you calculate the length of a string in python and the next thing is uh, finding the character at a particular given index position value right so in java we use the caret function so in python we do not have a function for that so it's it doesn't mean that we cannot do that in python we can do that in python but we don't need to make use of any function like that so what you can basically do in python is you can use you can let's say you want to find the character at the position at the index value let's say seven right so what you need to do is you can say uh, character ch is a variable and I can say st and then open closed uh, square braces like that and then inside this open closed square braces you can give the index value uh, at where you want to find the particular character so let's say I want to find the character at the seventh index so I'll say st of seven so basically that's going to uh, return the character which is present at the seventh index value right and it's going and we can just print it out you can say uh, character at seventh index is and I can print out ch right there perfect now let's go ahead and run this and let's see so it says character at seventh index is O so basically this is the character at seventh index right so that's how you find the character at a particular given uh, index value and the next thing is finding the index of a particular character which is basically opposite to what we just did right <coughs> excuse me um, so in order to do this you could uh, make use of a function called index so in uh, java it's index of but in python it's index so let's say i want to find out the index of uh, index of r the character r here so i can say um, ind equal to st dot index and i can say the character r right so i'll say index of r is right index of r is and um, you can just print out ind right there python strings dot pi so index of r is 8 yeah it's working so what if you give a character which is not existing in the string so let's say i give a here and a is not existing in this uh, string st so let's see what would be the output of it so it actually gave us no output instead it gave us a an error actually it says substring not found so in case of java if you can see it doesn't give us any error basically it returns the value minus one without giving us an error that a particular character is not found but in python it gives us an error so it does not return the value minus one in python and straight away gives us that the particular character is not found so what you can do to avoid this is you can first check out or check if a particular character exists in in a given string and only if that particular character first exists in that given string you can try to find out the index of that character so in order to do that you can use you can just use a if block right there you can say if a in st so it's as simple as that so what this does is it checks if the character a is present in the string st and if it is present we can find out the index or you can say else you can say um, print you can say uh, character 
doesn't exist. And uh, you could actually move this print statement inside the SIP block. Perfect. Now let's execute the same thing. So we are uh, trying to find the index of A. So it said character doesn't exist. Perfect. It's working. So also there is a little bit of difference between this index function as compared to the index of function in Java. So basically in Java, the index of function, what we did is we passed a character as an argument to the function. So we are again going to get the index of the particular character, right? So but in Python, what we can do is we can pass a string instead of a character. So if I say something like, uh, if I say something like word, which is basically a substring, a part of the string st, uh, it still works but in Java you can't do that because in Java the index of function takes the character as an argument and not as a string not the string as an argument but in Python we know that there is no there's nothing as a character so we can even pass a string as an input to the index function so basically what this does is it gives us the index of the first character of the string of the substring which is W so it gives us the index of W so let's try this out so, oh, wait a minute. I didn't save the file. Right, now it's going to work. Uh, it says character doesn't exist. Oh, wait, wait. I forgot to change it like that. If world in a stick. Now it will work. Right, so index of, it's actually world. Right, index of world is 6. So, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So as I've told you, it's going to give us the index of the character W, which because it's the starting character of the substring, right? Yeah, perfect. Now that's all about the index of and the last index of actually, you know, uh, you could even, I think you could even pass a second value for it. So let's say I have L right there. So if I say L comma three, I'm not sure if it works, but let's try this out. Say that, right? It it actually works. So index of L is three. So you can even give a second parameter, second integer parameter like that. You can basically tell the compiler to start searching from this index value, just like how you did in the in Java in the index of function in Java. You can give a second parameter like that and say the compiler to start searching from this value, uh, and then give us the index of the particular character. Right. Uh, that's all about the index of, uh, and then we'll talk about the substring. And in Java also there is a lot, I mean in Python, uh, there's a lot of difference between substring in Python and substring in Java. So in Java in order to get a substring, let's say I want to get world, I want to extract world from this string st. So what I'll be doing is I'll say st underscore uh, or I'll say sub st uh, is equal to st and I can actually use slicing. So we call this slicing. So what we can do is you can say open and closed uh, what you say square braces and inside this open and closed square braces you can give the starting index and the ending index of the substring that you want so what is the starting index that I want it's uh, 0 1 2 3 4 5 sorry 0 1 2 3 4 5 yeah 6 is the starting index I want so I'll say 6 and then you give the ending index that you want so uh, you basically separate the starting index and the ending index with a colon. So in Java, we separated it with a comma, but here we separated it with a colon. So the ending index is uh, basically, I want the whole whole uh, world right there. So I can say same len of st. So basically, I will get uh, everything from w to the end of the string. If I put, uh, if I give length, of the string as the ending index, right? So let's check this out. Uh, I actually forgot to print out the substring, so let's say print sub st, and there you go, print. So we got world as the output, right? So that's all about the substring and contains. Actually, we I thought we discussed contains in Java, but actually I forgot to discuss about contains. So or did I discuss contains? Well, I think I did discuss contains or did I not? Well, anyways, I don't remember if we 
if we spoke about contains in Java, but basically by using this contains function, you can check if a particular substring is present in the string or not. I think we did discuss about contains, but anyways, uh, let's talk about Python contains. So if you want to check if a particular substring exists in a given string, you can actually check it in Python and you don't need to use any function for this. So for example, let's say in this string hello world, I want to check if world is present in this string hello world. So I'll say if world in st, as simple as that. I'm, I'm, I'm basically checking if this substring world is present in this string st, which is hello world. So in that case, I'll say print world is present. Else I can just say, sorry, uh, I can just say print world is not present as simple as that right so let's go ahead and uh, run this so it says world is present perfect now uh, that's about the contains and then equals yeah I'm pretty sure that we did not discuss about equals uh, in Java well well basically equals is a really simple function it, it, it basically checks if these two strings are equal or not that's it that's all about equals or you can use basically instead of equals in Java I'm talking about so instead of equals you can use a comparison operator like the double equal to which we have discussed so you can e even use double equal to instead of equals to check if two strings are equal or not but anyways uh, in python how do you check if two strings are equal so let's say str2 equal to hello world without the space and if i want to check if these two strings are equal i can just say if str equal to equal to str2 i can say print two strings are equal equal else I can say print strings are not equal right uh, let's run this and say strings are not equal if I put a space in between these two things it means that strings are equal so it must print the strings uh, are equal right so that's how we compare two strings and then coming to uh, uppercase basically it's the same function you you basically convert a string into an uppercase or into a lowercase so in python uh, we all we also have a function but it's not two uppercase it's just upper so i can say st underscore upper equal to st dot upper so yeah that's how you convert a string into an uppercase you just say st dot upper right so i'll say print st underscore upper let's see right there you go it printed all the string in capital letters in the same way you can even use uh, lower case you can also convert the string into a lower case by using dot lower so let's say st underscore lower equal to st underscore upper dot lower so basically i'm con i'm converting this st underscore upper string which is basically all the characters in uppercase letters and then I'm converting it into a lowercase and then we'll just print out print st underscore lower right so let's run this there we go first we have st underscore upper and then we have st underscore lower right so uh, finally we have the trim function so I'm not sure if the trim function exists in Java in Python or not but let's actually check it out let me give some spaces for this string and I'll say st underscore trim equal to st dot trim not sure if the function exists or not so not sure if it works so it's a print st underscore trim i hope it works okay there's no function known as uh, trim in python all right um i think it's actually strip instead of trim so i'll say strip uh i hope it works yep it works so in java it's trim but in python it's trim so that's what i was talking about right the nomenclature varies the name of the function varies for every different programming language because obviously there there are different languages so the persons who wrote the compilers of these languages obviously have different minds different nomenclatures in their minds so obviously the name of the functions also are different so in in java it's trim but in python it's strip to remove the white spaces before or at the end of the string right so that's how you uh, trim out or strip out the white spaces before or at the end of any particular given string so yeah that's all the string functions we have discussed about 
uh, in Python and in Java also. So yeah, in the next video we'll be we'll be actually going ahead and uh, you know solving some problems, right? So yeah.